Okay, hello everyone. Um, I'm going to be talking to you today about a project we recently completed, which is called the Disney Reef, and it's at Great Ormond Street Hospital. Um, I'm going to refer to Great Ormond Street Hospital as GOSH, because that's what everyone does. So here's the site. Um, Great Ormond Street has undergone a two million pound massive overhaul in the last few years. And before they did that, this was a delivery zone in the middle of the hospital where lorries would come in at the back um, and all of these windows are all the way around three facades have children's bedrooms. So there's wards all the way up seven floors um, with children that have to stay in the hospital sometimes up to six months or even more. Um, so Great Ormond Street asked Disney to come up with an idea for this space that would be something for the children to look at from their bedrooms, but also somewhere um, where people could go and experience something pleasurable and fun inside the hospital, um, which obviously can be quite a stressful time. Um, the hospital has 600 patients per day, so it's quite a tall order. Um, so Disney, this is an initial sketch from Dis Disney. So they were creating a platform over the delivery area. Um, so this platform was completely built from scratch. Um, and you can look at it from above, from all of the bedrooms. Um, I should call them wards, really, from the wards. And um, so there's some key things that Disney um, came up with that they needed to do as a brief. Um, so on the right-hand side in yellow, we've got an undercover area. So this is the only area of the garden which is covered. So um, obviously this area can be used when it's raining. Um, they identified that there should be a teen zone. So a lot of the things in the hospital that are created are for much younger kids. And the hospital came up with this idea that they should have somewhere where teenagers could go because um, there's teenagers in the hospital as well. Um, they wanted a quiet area. So um, the pink... The pink circle here is um, dedicated quiet zone because they, the hospital asked um, Disney to create an area where kids could go with their family and sit and chat and have a quiet time and not be overlooked or seen by anyone else because there might be some quite difficult conversations happening. Um, there should be a lot of seating. Um, Disney wanted to have all of the Disney characters in the garden, so obviously they're paying for this themselves and they want to have every Disney character possible. Um, and also for the children, they see a Disney character, their faces light up, and so we've got to get all the Disney characters in there. Um, quite obvious, but not always done, is that wheelchair access has to be um, for ev everywhere in the hospital. Um, so all of these different elements have um, big space in between them for wheelchairs. Um, and also, around, along the bottom, up the side, and along the top, you can see this sort of spare white zone. And we weren't allowed to put anything around the edges. Um, this is for the window cleaning of those wards. Um, so nothing was actually allowed to touch the sides. So this is like completely isolated in the middle. So Disney, uh, this is about the stage when we were brought on to look at the lighting. So Disney created this 3D model. Um, which was fantastic, um, but my initial thoughts were, where, where are we going to put the lights? There's all the Disney characters are in there somewhere. You can see Nemo there and some other little plastic characters in, in the model. Um, we were told that this had to look really good from above and really amazing from within. All of the Disney characters had to be lit um, and that it should just be magical and lots of interesting stuff. But we were also told that we can't put any lights around this one metre zone and nothing can be attached to the buildings. So um, my initial thoughts were, well, where are we going to put the lights? Because if you're lighting a character, you really want to light it from sort of this angle. And there was just no height. There's these, these fronds, as they're called. Um, they didn't have any structure to them. They're just like grass wav wavering around. Um, and the only thing that has any height is this archway. So um, as a result of that meeting, Disney came up with an amazing idea um, and really, really helpful of them to add this huge feature in for, for the lighting um, to have a sunken ship in, in the garden. So all of our spotlights and most of the lighting is actually on this island. So we've got a huge sunken ship with two enormous masts. And these gave us the opportunity to attach lights to. And you can see on the left-hand side um, some of the ways that we could get light up high and lighting down onto the characters. 
So on this, we've got, I think, something like 10 spotlights up at the top of the mast, and then that bit at the front is, the, is called the bowsprit, and on the front of there, we've got more spotlights. Um, so during the light test with the model, um, something really magical happened. Um, I was testing the little spotlights and trying to show them where you're going to put the lights. There's nothing to attach them to. And in doing that, I held the light like this, and it shone a shadow of Peter Pan onto the side of the model. And everyone was like, oh, that looks pretty cool. Um, and so we came up with this idea of projecting Peter Pan onto the facade. And this is another way of getting light up into the space where children can see it, but without attaching anything onto the buildings. So this is about 12 meters high, this projection. Um, and this has become a huge feature of the lighting and the garden and of the hospital itself. Um, the reason being that J.M. Barry used to live right next door to Great Ormond Street Hospital. And I didn't know this, but he was a, a great adversary for the children's hospital. And in 1929, he gifted the copyright of Peter Pan to Great Ormond Street Hospital. Um, and through this gift, Peter Pan's magic made an unprecedented leap from the realm of fiction into reality. And the hospi hospital became began to receive royalties every time a production of the play was on, as well as from the sale of Peter Pan books and other products. Barry requested that the amount raised for the hospital from Peter Pan never be revealed, and Gosh has always honoured these wishes. Um, so the hospital absolutely delighted with this, and at night time, when all of the other lighting is off, Peter Pan is projected onto the facade, and it just, the children love it. So in the undercover area, um, this is the only area of the garden where you can, you can go if it's bad weather. So we sort of thought that there should be something quite interesting there. Um, so it came up with the idea of having interactive screens. So we've got three different heights for tiny kids, um, wheelchair height and adult height. And then if the weather's really bad, you can stand in the undercover area and there's like some sort of underwater games and stuff that you can play with. Um, and when they're not being used for the games, it just looks like a fish tank. So there's fish swimming around under there. And it's just really nice to see as you walk through. So this is the quiet zone. Um, they, Disney developed this huge clamshell which sort of shrouds this little coved area. Um, and all we've got here is two little spotlights uplighting the, the shell. Um, so if you could, actually, you could actually lie down in this area and relax. And, and the hospital wanted it to be somewhere where kids can talk with their family or might have like quite a difficult conversation with siblings or something about treatments. Um, <clears throat> so this is just a really quiet area where no one can see you and you can't be seen from above. So, you know, if, if, you, if things are getting emotional. Um, and every time I've actually been to the garden, there's been people sitting in this area, like having a little quiet time. So it's really worked out really well. So the teen zone, um, Disney created a separate area at the back of the garden um, dedicated to teenagers. They didn't want to have a barrier or a sign that said this is the teen zone, so they created an, uh, it's called Atlantis, basically, um, and the Disney movie Atlantis is, is sort of all, all got this blue um, filter over the movie, um, so I decided to light this whole area in blue light to give it a completely visual barrier from the rest of the garden, so there's no bright colours, it's just blue, um, and it just works really well. There's no sign saying it's a teen zone, but they've got lots of, like, seating inside, and it's all blue, and, and basically the teenagers just go and hang out there and there's no characters in that area it's completely different so it's worked out really well <coughs> so the Disney characters are all dotted around the garden this is just a few of them but they've all got spotlights coming from above and the spotlights are sort of narrow to medium beam and they're pin spotting each of the characters um, and this is something that Disney really really wanted because the characters are so important and they all look absolutely amazing with individual spotlights on either of them each of them. Um, the bow spit at the front of the ship, <coughs> that's the bit that comes out of the front of a ship. And so they've got this lantern hanging off the end of it. Um, and so we decided to put like a red LED inside and it's on a DMX so it kind of flickers. So you get this amazing like sense of like an old lantern hanging at the end of the bow spirit. And we also use the opportunity to have some more spotlights. So in the bottom half of the lantern um, is another chamber and inside there's some hidden spotlights and they're lighting characters as well. So it's like a really good opportunity to get more 
down lighting, basically. And finally, these are the only other elements that are on overnight. So this is something that looks really amazing from above. So it's fiber optics, <coughs> two different applications. So on the left-hand side, we've got these treasure chests um, with an amber filter, and then the, the treasure sort of sparkles with fibers. And on the right-hand side is the top of the clamshell, which is shrouding the quiet zone. And this has got... Um, fiber optics all the way across the top of it and they follow the line of the clam. So when you're looking down from the wards above, it actually looks like a clam shell. It's amazing. Um, so both of these just shimmer at night and it just looks really magical from above. Um, so that's it. And I'm just going to show you two short videos um, from the hospital. Mm, how do I play? <laughs> When we're in hospital, we tend to be in for And it's somewhere to hang out with my friends and family and other people in the hospital. And there's one more. When I walk through... Still use a TV screen. If you have sensory needs, there's lots of different lights and different colours. There's lots to touch, different textures, and lots of space as well to get around. Our children and young people told us that they wanted an area where it was quiet and chilled out, uh, especially when it's so busy on the wards so that they could take themselves away from those areas. And this will be a perfect area for them to hang out in. It's an amazing space, and I think it's brilliant, and I absolutely love it and I'm sure our children and young people